celebration of the year. Free to everyone, and it's all in fun. El Dorado is here. The El Dorado, the El Dorado. We live again the days of yesteryear. Familiar? Well, it must be spring. I see all the groundhogs are out. <laughs> oh, Say, how's business, Ranger? Anybody stole Boulder Dam lately? <laughs> she was still there this morning. <laughs> Roy, you should have been along on the rodeo circuit with us. Sure been paying off. Yeah? Hasn't it, boy? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure enough, boy. I'll bet you did. Just about enough for coffee and beans. I'll take a regular paycheck any old day. <laughs> uh, give me the rodeo. Fresh money. Paycheck, huh? Well, you better start earning it. We just passed the dam. We saw a few things that looked like they might need investigating. Oh, That's yeah, right. a lot of suspicious looking well, stuff. Well, thanks, fellas. There. I'll see you later. Oh, okay, right. Take it easy. Hey, fellas, how much money is regular paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I catch it? You know, there's a lot of tourists pass by here. We don't want none of them to miss a celebration. There's another pretty good place right over there. Think so? Mm-hmm. Might as well get your money's worth. It's a hundred dollars fine anyway. Yeah. Huh? What's that? hundred dollars fine? Yep, and 60 days in jail. Defacing government property. Of course, you wouldn't let a little thing like that bother you. Man, I don't know. Come to think of it, I know a much better place up the canyon there. I don't see what harm a couple of little flimsy posters will do. Why, that won't look no bigger than a fly speck alongside of that dam. Trouble with the government is they ain't patriotic. Don't forget that one over there. Well, I'm getting to it, ain't I? You know, sometimes I wonder whether you're with us or against us. Are you going to pitch in this year and help us wrench it? Sure, I'll be there in a couple of days. Pass these out among your friends. I'll distribute them personally.
Calling Miss Carol Randall, please. Calling Miss Carol Randall. Calling Miss Carol Randall, please. Hey, boy. If you find her, let me know. I've been looking all over that dad blame place for her. Give us a lowdown, Miss Randall. We heard you were bringing a house party out here in a Fifth Avenue bus. Boys, please, I've given up that sort of thing. You mean your family threatened to cut off your allowance? Well, that helped me to reform. Excuse me, Miss Randall, your horses have arrived. Thank you. Hey, uh, shoes, Dad, get out of here. What did I tell you fellas about Swamp Miss Randall? Thank you, Gabby. Uh, I got your whole day mapped out for you. Luncheon with the Hell Rider Committee at 12.15. Trip to Boulder Dam, 145. Dinner with the governor at your father's ranch. And then... Gabby, I'm in enough trouble with my family already. You know, I'm supposed to keep my picture out of the paper for us. Yeah, but the committee's waiting for you. They got a great big surprise for you. Today's your lucky day. Gabby, I think you're a darling. But you remember you promised not to arrange my vacation for me this time. Yeah, but... I thought maybe you'd change your mind. Well, that just goes to show you you should never depend on a woman. <laughs> Hello, Ann. Have a cage for this one? I think so. Thank you. Say, do you have another stuff like that when you're wearing? I'm going riding, and I need something to keep my hair back. They have some in the lobby. I'll get you one. Thanks. You know, with the ticket uh, number on it? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. You see, I'm new here, and I don't know. Oh, that's all right. You'll catch on to the ropes in no time. I'll try my best. What you need is a decoy. Decoy? Mm-hmm. Gee, thanks. You don't know what this means to me. That's okay. I'm glad to help you out. Sure is nice to see so many folks that are proud of their city. Now, Las Vegas is a metropolis. We ain't forgetting the men that pioneered this country. So that's the reason that once a year, come the day, we turn back the clock and give the folks a rip snorting wide open frontier town. It's the good old Hell Dorado Day. <laughs> Drop that gun, stranger, or I'll let you have the other barrel. Hmm. I almost started the celebration by shooting an innocent man. Hi, <laughs> Roy, you're late. Hey, Hello, Roy. Hello. Folks, as you know, you've elected the queen again this year for the Hell Dorado. Well, she's supposed to be sitting right here. But don't you worry, none. I'll see she gets here. I hope. I had this put on your bill. Thanks, Ann. Say, I did some business for you while you were gone. You wouldn't be interested in a steady job, would you? Well, at least you meet some interesting people. Do you know that's the first quarter I ever earned? I'm going to keep it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make you a trade. Fair enough? Gee, thanks. Would you put the scarf in my coat pocket, please? Yes, Miss Rand. Carol. Hello, Alec. Haven't you strayed a little from your happy hunting ground? Why didn't you know? The family decided a long time ago I'd do much better on my own. Oh. How are you, Alec? Hello, Joe. How are you? It's Alex Baxter. His family used to be a big society around New York. The way he lives, you'd never know that they were practically broke. He's quite a playboy. He dropped 6,000 last night on one roll of the dice. I thought I was here. I heard the bellboy paging you. Oh, yes, he came to tell me my horses had arrived. I was just on my way out to see if they were all right. Would you like to go? Oh, by all means. Silver star, purple say, I love you. Fairy skies, tender sighs, heart so true. Go ahead and see what's going on. Now where Mother Nature's really given all the things that make a heap of living. Silver stars, purple sage, eyes of blue. Got my horse, got my dog, got you. Do I really love it here? Oh, yes, indeed I do. Silver stars, purple sage, eyes of blue. Silver stars, purple sage, eyes of blue. 
got my horse, got my dog, and got you. Do I really love it here? Oh, yes, indeed I do. Silver stars, purple shades, eyes of blue. Thanks, Roy. Well, just like I told you folks, guest of honor is here, Miss Carol Randall. Sheriff Meade decided to make her a deputy sheriff. Hmm. Thought you'd spray me, eh? Come on, Miss Randall. No, Gabby, you promised you wouldn't do these things. You... We just gonna make you sheriff, that's all. Are you sure that's all? Why, of course. Well, if that's all, all right. You asked for it. Sheriff, you swear the young lady in? Raise your right hand, please. State of Nevada, County of Clark. I, Carol Randall, do solemnly swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States and the State of Nevada against all enemies, whether domestic or foreign. I will bear true faith, allegiance, and loyalty to the same, any ordinance or law of any state notwithstanding. I will well and faithfully perform the duties of the Office of Deputy Sheriff. I do. You also swear to uphold the honor of being named Queen of the Hell Dorado? Gabby, you promised. You said you... She do. Will you pin on the badge, Roy? Sure. Yeah. Who's watching the check room? Oh, didn't you know I made enough money to retire? I'm going into the law business. And if you find yourself breaking the law, you know you got to turn yourself in. You need any help, officer? Yes, I do. You've no idea. Excuse me, I, I think I was her prisoner first. Well, he's right. Uh, you see, we just stopped in for a minute, but uh, thank you very much. What's those hats? Doesn't she make a cunning sheriff? Nice gal, that Carol. But a little mite unpredictable. You know, for a girl that doesn't want any publicity, you're certainly doing all right for yourself. <laughs> this seems to be my lucky day. Just one bet. Ten on the red, please. Maybe you're lucky. Here's a thousand, she's right. Well, for a thousand, I hope I'm right. Fifteen on the black. I'm sorry, Alec. I should have warned you. I'm as unlucky as black cats are walking under ladders. I'm not much better. Did you want to see me? Yes. I thought you might be able to help us out. This is Mr. Humphreys of the State Bank. I've met Roy several times. Sure. How are you, Roy? Okay. These thousand dollar bills have been coming in over the gambling tables. It's black market money. It's money that's never been declared for income tax purposes. Well, this is a letter from the government authorities asking my office to investigate and report anyone spending these big bills or having them in their possession. You've traced these, I suppose? To a man named Alec Baxter. You may have seen this picture in the paper. It's in there two or three times a week. Big party, society. Well, I just met this fellow with Carol Randall. Very likely. He makes a business of knowing everybody in the Blue Book. Have you talked with him? Not yet. We have an idea he's spending the money for somebody else. These large bills are flooding the country. Millions of dollars are passed into the hands of black market grafters. They know they're being checked on, so they're afraid to spend the money themselves. That's where a man like Alec Baxter is useful. There's a syndicate to buy up these big bills at a discount. Then they take the risk of getting rid of them. And the way it looks, Baxter's fronting for the syndicate. Well, he's ideal for the job. Always giving big parties and gambling for high stakes. Nobody thinks much about it because he's got that kind of a reputation. I've investigated him financially. The Baxter fortunes have dwindled down to practically nothing. Alec is used to high living, so he's made a deal for himself. Well, why don't you hold him for the authorities? You can't arrest a man for spending legitimate thousand dollar bills. We'd have to prove that he had a considerable number of them in his possession. He's probably got them somewhere, but that's pretty flimsy evidence to ask for a search warrant. That's where I come in, huh? I thought I might bring him in for routine questioning while you took a look around his hotel room. Sure, I'll do it for you, Sheriff. Here's a duplicate key to his room. There's uh, only one thing to remember. If you get caught, you'll have to get out of that room the best way you can. There won't be any law to back you up. I won't do it anyway. This might be a nice way to spend my vacation. I'll have him out of his room in five minutes. Good. Johnny. 
Johnny, come in. Hiya, Mitch. Hi. You look as if you're worried about something. I'm not. The boss is. He doesn't like the way you've been throwing his money around. For every grand you've been passing for him, all he gets back is 600. I'm doing the best I can. Sure. You and your parties getting your picture in the paper, not to mention the way you've been losing at the wheel. I thought that was part of our understanding. I have to have the reputation of being a lavish host so that people will believe I really have $1,000 bills to spend. As long as I'm not keeping anything for myself, I can't see what he's squawking about. Okay. That's between you and the boss. But this time you've got a real job. That's 250 grand you've got there. The boss wants 200 back, and he wants it fast. It shouldn't be too difficult. Hello? Yes, right away. Thank you very much. Who was that? That was a desk clerk telling me the horses are ready. I've made a date to go riding with Miss Randall. Hello, Sheriff. Sorry to trouble you, but I'd like to have you come down to the office. Just a few questions I'd like to ask. Uh, can't we make it some other time? I have a young lady waiting for me, Miss Randall. I already told her you wouldn't be able to keep the appointment. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, I... I don't seem to have much choice in the matter. This way, Mr. Baxter. Charlie? Sure. The sheriff just took Alex out of here. Earlier I saw him get a key to Baxter's room from the desk and Rogers was headed in that direction. You better take my master key and get up there. I think something's in the air. Hey, uh... Thank you, Charlie. Is your order ready, Miss Randall? Fine. Hey, come back here. That's my horse. But, Miss Randall, where are you going? I'm going after that horse thief.
the bullet hit you? No. Well, let me help you out. Oh, just a minute. My wind. That tree. Then you're all right? Yes. Did you get my horse? No, I didn't get your horse. Well, it's all right. He's insured. For your information, I was after the man who was riding him. He happened to be a racketeer. If you hadn't have tagged along, I might have caught him. Well, you needn't be so snippy about it. I couldn't help it. And besides, I had a perfect right to be here. I'll have you know I'm a deputy sheriff. You ought to put that badge away and only wear it on Halloween. Well, I don't have to stay here and be insulted. Nobody asked you. Oh. The opening of the celebration will be marked by the colorful Pioneer Parade. All stores and shops will be closed and a record attendance is anticipated. Leading the parade for the third time as Grand Marshal will be Ranger Captain Roy Rogers. Three times and out. You know, if he'd stuck to his Grand Marshaling instead of trailing me around for the last two days, he could have gone out leading parades until he grew a long gray beard. Hey, my own mother wouldn't recognize me. No, not even if she cared to. <laughs> Now remember, you're perfectly safe as long as you're behind all that brush. Half the men in town will be wearing beards as part of their masquerade. So after the shooting, don't get panicky. Just stick around close to the crowd. Don't worry, I'll be right in the middle of them long hands. You know, the parade started. We better get down there. Mm. Sheriff Badges? Honest engine. Then we're still friends? If you'll promise not to fall off any more horses. I promise. That does it. Thanks a lot. The hell the The hell the greatest celebration of the year. Free to everyone, and it's all in fun. Tell the Oh, what? 
a whole bunch of you. It's Gabby. Come on, get in there, please. Certainly it's Gabby. Why, you ornery nuthead. I had my hands right on the fellow that fired that shot. This is the man. His is real. <laughs> Crackers and milk. Rather humble fare, isn't it, Alec? But, uh, I find it steadies my nerves. You didn't get me up here for a lecture on crackers. That's quite right, Alec. Quite right. As a matter of fact, I had something more important in mind. It's unfortunate, Alec, but you have become a definite liability. All right, J.W. What are you leading up to? Well, you've aroused the police, and after this unfortunate incident at the parade this afternoon, they'll be buzzing around here like flies. I'd be greatly relieved to know that uh, you were safely out of town. You told you had another half million dollars coming in. I think I'd better stick around for a while. I think I can find ways to dispose of it. Now, wait a minute. You're in no position to tell me what I have to do. Should I consider that as a threat, Alec? Oh, you can take it any way you want. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, but uh, perhaps we'd better discuss it in the morning. Uh, think it over. I have an idea you'll change your mind. Well, it's regrettable. It's most regrettable indeed. We would all have been spared a great deal of inconvenience if only Alec had just been a little bit more cooperative. Of course, this means we'll just have to dispense with him. Dispense? Knock off. Oh, that! And 
We're happy to be here, and I have a group of boys that I'd like to introduce to you. It's Bob Nolan and the Sons of the Pioneers. Come on out, fellas. We're playing the Happy Helen Rodders. Folks, we'd like to start off with a little tune called My Saddle Pals and I. <laughs> Riding the reins together, my saddle pals and I. Through every kind of weather, my saddle pals and I. Every night keep the light of the bright starry night on the prairie. Better down on the round on the ground or the cattle's heart and weary. With a blanket for my bed and a saddle for my head on the prairie. And her faithful ponies tethered here and there. Riding the reins together, my saddle pals and I. We're side by side in the saddle, through sunshine and through rain. We ride, ride, ride in the saddle, o'er the barren plains. Riding you do me a favor? Of course. Well, I'm entered in the bulldogging, and I have an important message for Roy, and I was wondering if you'd give it to him for me. Yes, I'd be glad to. Well, he's wanted up at the dam. There's been a shooting. It's all up by the name of Baxter. Baxter? Alec Baxter? Yeah. Oh, yes, I'd be glad to. Gee, thanks. Next event will be the steer bulldogging contest. And the first contestant will be Bob No Money Nolan. <laughs> Turn the room, boy. There he goes. Take after him, Bob. He's leaving his horse. Still no money. Hey, ain't you left yet? What? Well, there was a hurry call from the dam for you. Didn't Miss Randall give you the message? Carol Randall? Yeah. No, she didn't. Take care of Trigger for me, will you, Pat? Yeah. Now, what else have you to report? Well, we didn't find the body until about an hour ago. It's Baxter, all right. You know, the way I figured, someone drove him up here, told him to get out of the car, and then pumped three slugs from a 45 in his back. What makes you think it was a 45? Because it made such nice, big, round holes. Oh, hello, Roy. We're just making a preliminary investigation. Well, don't let me stop you. Uh, Miss Sherlock Holmes, go right ahead. Thank you. Now, you were saying about that 45. Do you think... Now that you've taken over, Sheriff, uh, what's the next move? Well, uh, examine the corpus delicti, of course. The body's yours. Thank you. May I see the body, please? Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. I feel fine. You'd better sit down here before we have another corpus delicti on our hands. You'll get used to it, though. Oh, sure. Soon as I learn the ropes. Those tire tracks were left by the murder car. Well, Joe, the first thing we better do is to photograph those tracks before they get tramped over. Found these on Baxter. 
Better write these down. Gold cigarette case with Baxter's initials on it. A room key from the Last Frontier Hotel. Billfold. Empty. Oh, wait a minute. Here's something. Four tickets to the carnival at the Helderada Village. This might give us a lead. Somebody in there at the Helderada Court. Andrew Court and Dance Hall. Step in there and see the beautiful dancing girls down at the dance hall at the Helderada Village. Come on in, mister, right down there at the beautiful dance hall. Oh, hi, Roy. Hi. You got your tickets? You got four of them. You mind if I keep them for souvenirs? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Hi, you're Ranger Boy. You're late. I might have known you'd be here. Do you have the pictures? Pictures? Oh, of course. You know the photographs of the tread marks on the tires. Yes, I have them, and I'm going to keep them. Do you mind if I tag along? I've never been able to stop you yet. Look, Roy, I don't like to force myself on people, but after all, I feel responsible. If it hadn't been for me, you'd have had Alex Baxter in jail a long time ago. It's as simple as that. Baxter wasn't the man we were after. He was just running for a million-dollar racket. When he stopped being useful, they got rid of him. Found some other way to operate. Thousand-dollar bills are still being passed over the gambling table. Well, just let them keep going. We'll nail them yet. This is no game for little girls to get mixed up in. They're playing for keeps. You know what's the matter with you? You're just afraid the Rangers will be shown up by an amateur deputy sheriff. You know something? You guessed it. Professional jealousy. Wait a minute. Aren't we going to check the tires? What do you think I've been doing? I've already checked the parking lot. I'm starting down here and check back this way. Nice ball race tonight, man. Roy, uh, it's much shorter over this way. Let those prisoners out of there, Jack. Now listen, folks, I'm warning you. If you catch it wearing those dude clothes again, I'm gonna put you in the brig. <laughs> Hiya, Roy! How's business? Fine, fine. Now, oh, just a minute, Roy. Anything wrong? Well, I think I'd better take another look at you. Uh, your tie's all right. Hat looks good. Shirt, gun. Everything okay? No, no, no! Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're shamed. You got no beard. No beard. He has no beard. Put him in. Put him in the break. In you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Judge. I'm in a hurry. I have something to do. I know what you have to do. You have to sing a song. That's your fine. <laughs> yeah, and here's your guitar. I'll hold these for you till you're through. Oh, Judge, I need her to help me. She can sing it too. Catch it, catch it. Catch it. Go on, sing. It's a do it. I'll do it. I really don't know what to sing, what's popular or new, but it's your idea, so help me out. It's the neighborly thing to do. Says you. When you see a friend who's in a spot, just lend a hand, it means a lot. Be a good, 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 good neighbor. For it's no fun traveling all alone. It's tough to make it on your own. Be a good, 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 good neighbor. It started south of the border, good neighbor policy. And we should never forget that we're one big family. So it's plain to see you can't go wrong. Just stop and help someone along. Be a good, 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 good. Be a good, good neighbor. How about letting me out of here now? Oh, no, no. He can sing this in Spanish. I heard him. What? That's it. Wait a minute. Go back. Sing it in Spanish. Si un amigo necesita plata, pues préstese la por favor. Si a un buen, 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 buen amigo. No tiene chiste estar así, si nadie que me quiere a mí. Si a un buen, 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 buen amigo. Impatient ya en el sur, con un saludo es amigo. Y recordaremos siempre que hay que ser unido. No puede pasar por la vida sin un amigo o oh, amiga. Si a un buen, 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 si a un buen amigo. You were lucky, Roy. We usually hang them. I think I was framed. I'll take these pictures. Okay, Mr. Ranger. 
you're wasting your time. This is the car. Look, they match. It's the same tread, all right. And look at this cut. Mm -hmm. All four of them check for these pictures. We'd better get over with the crowd. Whoever owns that car isn't going to come back with us standing there. Where will we watch for them? The shooting gallery. Yeah. And have a thrill. Here you go. Stop it up, folks, here. How's your skill? Check your skill. Make your choice here. Rifles, pistols, or arrows. This will be all right. All right, this should I? If you're going to keep playing deputy sheriff, you'd better learn how to use one of these. Oh, I'm a regular Annie Oakley. Watch me. Here goes. That'll just cost you 25 cents more, mister. Well, I can't afford this. You better let me have that. Give you a couple of pointers. First, you gotta keep at least one eye open. Watch the target. And don't pull the trigger, you squeeze it like this. Hey. <laughs> That's nice shooting, mister. What'll it be, sir? Pistol or rifle? I'll try this. Hello, Mr. Driscoll. A little out of practice, aren't you? Well, these old eyes are not as sharp as they used to be. You should have seen me years ago when I was riding the cattle trail to the railhead. Those were the days. You mean you really had to be quick on the draw, huh? Well, it's all changed now. The victim today is taken for a ride. He's slugged, helpless, gun sticking in his back. Yes, that's just what happened to Baxter. Yes, I, I heard about that. It's an outrage. Man is brutally murdered and nothing done about it. I wouldn't be too sure about that. You mean the law is really going to do something? You never can tell. Now, don't tell me they've found out who the killers are. We don't know a thing. People that don't know anything shouldn't uh, talk so much. Somebody might take you serious. I think you two know more than you're letting on. <laughs> well, don't take her seriously. She's been playing detective ever since she got this badge. Boy. Hey, mister, you got four more shots. No little practice won't hurt you. I guess you're right. All are working for nothing. Would you mind explaining just why you let them get away? If we hadn't, one of us would have been accidentally shot in the back. Where'd you get that idea? Call it a hunch or anything you like, but there was something funny about the way Driscoll kept asking questions and playing with that gun. Now, you don't think he's tied up with that murder? Maybe. But we're going to follow that car and find out. Just a minute, sir. I want to talk to you, young woman. Of all the jiggle brain gadabouts I've ever seen, where in tarnation you been? <laughs> What's the matter, Gabby? What's the matter? I got the trembling fidgets trying to catch up with her. That's what's the matter. You run out on the rodeo, didn't you? I wish you'd make up your mind that you're going to be queen or ain't you? Well, of course I am, Gabby. You know it. Well, <laughs> hey, we're putting on a treasure hunt tomorrow. Biggest event of the whole bunch. You're supposed to give away the prize. You can count on me, Gabby. Word of honor. Well, you listen to me now. If you change your mind again, I'm going to take you across my knee and paddle you. I am so help me. I'll be there. Hey. What do you think you're doing? Huh? Who? Me? Oh, nothing. Just advertising the treasure hunt, that's all. You fellas ought to get some horses and get on it. Win yourself a prize, over a thousand dollars. Take that thing off. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been biting my nails. Come on, leave them alone.
I'm tough as a boot and a wild galoot and a son of the lone prairie. He's tough as a boot and a son of the lone prairie. I drink raw liquor, my trigger hands quicker than the human eye can see. Nothing in here. I'm a high strung lad and my temperament's bad and the least thing makes me sore. Nothing in here. Once Jesse James took careful aim with 60 rounds of lead. Once Jesse James took 60 rounds of lead. On my chest they cracked me all bounced. news today, Dan. Mind if I take a look? Oh, go ahead. I'm a high strung lad and my temperament's bad and the least thing makes me sore. Nothing in here. When my teeth are gnash like a lightning flash, the sparks fly everywhere. Like a lightning flash, the sparks fly everywhere. I can roar so loud that a thunder cloud will burst in the trampling air. Nothing to hear I'm a high-strung lad and my temperament's bad, and the least thing makes me so nothing to hear him wrong. When they made this land, they needed a plan for the toughest man to be. They needed a plan for the toughest man to be. So the recipe came and they built the frame and then they assembled me. I'm a high-strung man and my temperament's bad and the least thing makes me so nothing to hear him Now I'm taking this time to explain this rhyme in a manner unprofane. He's taking his time in a manner unprofane. But I'm a warning you guys with a batch of black eyes better smile when you speak my name. I'm a high-strung lad and my temperament's bad and the least thing makes me so nothing to hear him <laughs> Been working here long? Well, a couple of days. Why? I'd like to see you in the cashier's office. Sure. Those two men at the bar, are they friends of yours? I've seen them around. Why? I'd like to take a look at that paper. That's what I thought. I suppose these thousand dollar bills got in here by mistake. You figured out. That's easy. You work these into the roulette game, then forget where they come from. There's only one trouble that ties you in with a murder charge. Alec Baxter. Murder charge? I didn't murder anybody. If you want to prove that, you better start talking. Sure, sure. Where did these come from? They don't tell me anything. All I know is they come in and slip the money to me. Those two fellows out there at the bar. Is this all you have? They just give me a little bit at a time. But there's a lot more coming in. Today sometime. Five hundred of them. A half a million dollars worth, and you don't know where they come from or anything about them, huh? Told you everything I know. Honest, I don't know anything about a murder. I think I better call the sheriff. Hi, folks. Hi, Gabby. Like everybody's all ready. Hi, Pappy. Hello, Hello, Pappy. Hi, Gabby. All set? Rare to go. Ah, you can start at any time now, Pappy. We've got this thing cinched. Yeah, we're splitting the prize money six ways. Maybe we hadn't better tell the other writers. They might all get discouraged and go home. Hey, Pat? Oh. That's a murder car we found last night. Yeah, I know. I've been watching it all day. Well, excuse me for butting in. I suppose you have the whole case solved. Not yet, but my hunch was right. Driscoll's working with those two men. He's talking to them in the barn now. I'm sure of it now. Rogers knows more than he's letting on. He was all prepared to take you into custody last night. Then what was stopping him? Perfectly obvious. Following you. He's looking for bigger game. But I still don't get it. Why do we have to go chasing off on a treasure hunt? You should study the way of the fox, Johnny. He leads his pursuers into all sorts of difficulties. I believe there are more hunters killed in the chase than there are foxes. I think I know what you mean. Come on, Johnny. I'll show you how to make like a fox. Hiya, Mr. Driscoll. Hello, 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 Mr. Driscoll.
Hello, Mr. Driscoll. Roy, do you suppose they're going into the treasure hunt? I don't know. But I'm going to follow them and find out. I don't dare to let them out of my sight. Excuse me, Mr. Driscoll. The uh, desk clerk sent this over. He said it might be the letter you've been expecting. Yeah. This is it. Thank you. Sorry, forgive me. Thank you very much. It's a Desert Spring Station. as you can to the three aces mine, then you scrounge around till you find the clue that tells you where to go next. You keep on going, follow all the clues, no matter what crazy places they lead you to. Somewhere along the line, you'll find the hidden treasure. Right. May the best man, right. woman, and child win. Right. Wait. Good luck to the whole no. panel of you. One to get ready, two to get set, three to go. You've got to help. Right after Roy and stop him. Tell him to go to the railroad station at Desert Springs. It's a matter of life and death. Railroad station? Desert Springs? Why? Never mind. Hurry, Gabby. That wise guy. So stick with me. Hey, fellas, let them find it themselves. Hey, Louis.
baggage agent. When I ain't selling tickets, on the telegraph key or sweeping floors. Well, hurry, please. This is an emergency. I'm hurrying. Well, come on. Now, what was it you wanted? There'll be three men here in a car any minute. They'll want to claim some baggage, and don't you give it to them no matter what they say. I'm sorry, miss, but if they got a claim check, there ain't nothing I can do. Don't you dare give them that baggage. I'm a deputy sheriff, and those are orders. Lady, I take my orders from the railroad. Besides, you don't look like no deputy sheriff to me. Well, all right. Heh. Heh. And don't slam the door as you go out. These newfangled gals are certainly getting me down. Deputy sheriff. Ain't no deputy sheriff going around here that I ever heard of. Baggage check. What kind of baggage are you looking for? Well, I'm not sure. It's a gift from a friend of mine. They'll be in here. According to this number, they should be right over here. Whoa! Well, I'll be doggone. What's the matter? All the tags are gone. How am I going to find out which is which? Quit stalling. There must have been that gal was here. Search the place. Examine everything. Hold on. That's against the rules. I'll notify the main office and you can come back tomorrow. Chicken on ice. Mr. Oh, good. No, no. Leave her in there. Rogers will be through here in a second. Our loose horse must have tipped off Rogers. We'll have to get out of here fast. Gabby. Hmm. 
These trailer hunts are getting rougher every year. Got a message for you. Carol went trailing off after Driscoll. Said for you to come to the Desert Springs Depot. Said it's uh, very important. Important? Mm -hmm. well, she's walking right into trouble. Gabby, you better cut across and get the pioneers. We'll need plenty of help. Yeah. Hey, you ain't gonna leave us like this. Oh, no, you needn't worry, Aaron. Pleasures won't bother you much before sundown. What'd you stop us for? We were in the lead. Well, it's Roy. He needs your help. Well, we'll be glad to help Roy as soon as we finish this treasure, huh? Yeah, Come on, fellas, sure. we can still catch Let's go. Let's go. Hey. Yeah, but, boy, it's now he needs you. you would. You want to go in there, Ranger? Get go. Did the light go off in there? Don't be funny. Get their guns.
of the maid. Hold those two men for the law. Yeah, ma'am. Hold those two men for the law. 61,000, 62,000. Gabby, where'd you get that money? From Driscoll. Driscoll? Where is he? Come here, I'll show you. What happened to him, Gabby? Poor fella run into this accidentally. You're under arrest. I'm holding you as accessory to the murder of Alec Baxter. Why, you... Oh, <laughs> These meddling girls. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me. If it hadn't been for that meddling girl, I'd have gotten away with this, and I'd have had her out. Gosh, I'm, I'm, get that off of me. I don't want it. Get that off of me. The El Dorado, the El Dorado, the greatest celebration of the year.